Now, joining us is Gerald Salente, and here's his economic martial law top trends for 2012. And uh, we'll do a document cam shot of that for the viewers uh, right here in the general document cam shot area. And uh, there it is for viewers out there. Top 12 trends, and he said this a year and a half ago. This came out before 2012 or almost two years ago and said there'll be bank runs, there'll be bank holidays. That's, you know, he, he did a little song on air. It's a holiday. He said it would start in the Mediterranean, in Europe, uh, and now it has. And he said when they start taking 10% or so out of bank accounts, it's big trouble. And we're actually digging up, and we should have it, uh, we've, we've actually found it, but we're transferring it. We're actually digging up uh, some of the times Gerald has said this. And now he's going to tell us what comes next after this. And don't forget, after he'd predicted all of this, his own private gold account got bought, a company he'd been trading with for 30 years or so. It got bought by MF Global, unbeknownst to him, and they just took his money and took billions of other people's dollars. And now they're saying $40 billion of it still hasn't been paid back uh, even though it's been in bankruptcy. So, so there's a couple billion totally stolen, and they've given some of it back, but then 40 billion total to just general creditors of MF Global itself. But he wasn't part of that. He just had a bank account they grabbed. So, and now they're calling it a tax when foreign banks, Cyprus won't even vote right now because of the bank holiday and the shutdown and the fire bombings. So now the Euro says, well, we have the power just to do it anyways. We put Mario Draghi over uh, Italy. We put other people over uh, Greece. We did that in Ireland. We're just going to take over. So this is the imperial banking takeover. Trends Journal uh, head, top trends forecaster, Gerald Salente, uh, joins us uh, right now, trendsjournal.com. Uh, Gerald, break down what this means, uh, what we're facing, and now where you see this acceleration going. All right, first, very important, the trend tracking tip, I write about it all the time. They always do things on the weekends, so they freeze the people out, whether reporting on news that they're obligated to report on or pulling scams like this. So after the markets close, they always do the dirty deal, whether it's a downgrade of a country's creditworthiness, releasing information about a big lie that they were covering up and are obligated to tell it about, they always do it after the markets close, after it's too late. And this way it stabilizes the markets. It gives them time to rig it during the weekend so it doesn't go down as much as it should. So again, this came out on a weekend, froze everybody out, couldn't get their dough out, number one. Number two, what you said, the white shoe boy lingo. How about calling it a, uh, a tax on deposits? Isn't that a nice word? How about stealing your damn money? So they call it white shoe boy language to make it seem softer. The other thing, another beautiful term, white shoe boy language, they're giving depositors a haircut. No, oh. they're not. They're stealing their money. So now the other thing to watch out, because this is a big picture that's unfolding. Watch the prostitutes, listen to them. Anybody could do it. It's all going to be put up in a little while. Go to CNBC, the, the flunkies for the money junkies. All they did was spend about 15 minutes talking about how Cyprus was a haven for money, money laundering for the Russian criminals. So now so the entire public deserves it because there's money laundering when the mega banks, the Federal Reserve, has been caught with over $400 billion in Wachovia and Wells Fargo banks and got in no trouble. That's Bloomberg AP. Exactly. They're going to criminalize all of us. Well, bank money's dirty. So we're taking, whether you're a fireman, a teacher, a cop, uh, a, a, a psychologist, a, a farmer, an auto mechanic, all of you get 10% of your money taken because you're a gangster. Exactly. But do you see what they're doing, though, Alex? The story's much bigger. This new prime minister they just put in in Japan, the, the head of Japan, the president uh, of the party, she, his first stop, she's first stop, his, a Z I, X I is she, his first stop was to go see Putin. 
This is really an attack on Russia. You're talking about money laundering? Hey, anybody here the Grand Cayman Islands or the big grand scheme? Did anybody ever hear the HSBC money laundering scandal? Ever heard of Switzerland? Ever heard of Luxembourg? Ever heard of Monte Carlo? Exactly. So what did HSBC just pay? Almost $2 billion worth of fines in December for money laundering. So what they're doing is they're, they're making this seem like a convoluted issue. The other important point, we're only talking about a $10 billion bailout here. This isn't a big one. It shows you the fragility of the entire system. The next important point, you're hearing now from the American Banking Association, from DC, don't worry about it, Americans. Your money's insured. Yeah, just like it's insured over there in Cyprus. As a member of the Eurozone, the money's supposed to be insured for 100,000 euros, about 125,000 But it's not dollars. insured from them stealing it. Exactly. But here's what I believe they're going to do. When the crisis starts spreading, what they're going to do, they're going to devalue the currencies. So they're going to say, yeah, yeah, don't worry, your money is insured. But guess what? It's only worth a fraction of what it is. There's a precedent for this. And they'll do it during the holiday. Remember you did that little holiday dance? That's right. Are we, are we going to send you the videos of me doing that? You should be receiving them momentarily. But here's the rub. When they did it in the United States in 1933, they called a bank holiday and they did it by devaluing the currency because in those days gold was pegged to the dollar or the excuse me the dollar was pegged to gold the dollar was pegged to gold at about twenty dollars and sixty five cents an ounce or thereabouts after they stole all the people's gold and made them give it back on the penalty of law they then repegged the price of a dollar to gold to thirty five dollars an ounce which means that you lost 70% of your purchasing power. So don't worry, your money's guaranteed, you're going to get it back, but guess what, Jack? It's going to be worth a fraction of what it was before. And that's why you're seeing now, as we speak, gold prices are again moving back up, and then all of a sudden, they're again saying, hey, gold is a safe haven. No kidding. Amazing. And they've been using naked shorting to try to drive it down while you can pull it up. George Soros, institutions, the communist Chinese government have been snatching gold as fast as they can. Right. And now we're looking also, when you're looking at the fragility of all this, yes, you know, the, the, the GDP, the banking to GDP is eight times that of, of, of the, in, um, in Cyprus. It's eight times their GDP, which is very large, and it is a banking hub, for, and they were trying to establish themselves like a Cayman Island, like an alternative to Switzerland. But remember, their GDP is only 0.2% of the entire Eurozone. This is chump change. Well, here's my next point. Just like you said, they had to steal a few billion of people's money to prop up all of MF Global to show the fragility and didn't get in trouble. And you said this will only encourage them now to start stealing more. This is a small bite test. They want to see if it panics things too much, they'll back off and only take maybe 5%, 7% now they're talking about. Do you agree that's what this is, is a trial balloon? I definitely agree with it. I definitely agree. You know, there are two things Two, two stories that should ring in everybody's mind that tell you what it's all about. One, you know, not having to do with this, but it will have to do with it later as we get closer to war, is General Dwight D. Eisenhower warning the nation that the military industrial complex was taking it over. A five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces, and for all those Republicans out there, a two-term Republican president. The other one is, the story of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, becoming violent and picking up a whip to drive the money changers out of the temple.
This has been going on forever. These are money changers. It's fraudsters. They were making people give them 10 silver coins for one silver coin that the rabbis would only take uh, to pay for the offerings and ripping everybody off. And by doing that, by making them pay to, to, to make an offering to God, by, by turning that into a blasphemy, they were able to take over that entire society and he physically attacked them. Exactly. So those two stories should stick in everyone's head. Hey, look, James Madison, anybody could Google it up. He called them money changers. Now they call them, again, they changed the name. They put white shoe boy language on it. Andrew Jackson so called, them, called them vipers. Yeah, exactly. So that nothing has changed. So when you go back to the meeting in Brussels over the weekend, oh, by the way, the people in Cyprus, like the people in Greece, like the people in Spain, like the people in Portugal, like the people in Ireland, they all deserve what they get. Because guess what? Just like the people in the United States, they voted to put these lying slime balls into office. They just had an election in Cyprus a couple of weeks ago. And this prime minister, the new president, he vowed that he would never do this. You listen to the finance chairman of the Cypriot government just a week ago saying that to steal the money, but of course they didn't use that language, from the depositors or tax the depositors was a stupid idea. And by the way, remember, they've signed on to all the Euro debt. Most of this is propping up derivatives, and we're giving $85 billion a month, and what, half of it, to foreign banks as part of QE Infinity. Uh, Gerald, we just skipped this network break to have more time. What do you expect to happen as they go into overdrive, uh, as currencies race to, de to devalue each other, and more and more the inflation is upticking? Um, now, wh what are you calling to happen next? This, this Eurozone issue is, is falling apart. Here's the big one going on in Italy. They still haven't formed a government. And, I, you know, being Italian, I'm really proud of the Italians for this one in pushing forward Beppe Grillo's five-star movement. And that's another little story, by the way. That's right. Beppe Grillo said last week, I have the London Telegraph here just to back you up. He said, quote, uh, the northern European countries are only holding on to us until the banks have recouped their investments in Italian sovereign bonds. Then they'll drop us like a hot potato. He went on to say that Mario Monti is nothing but a receivership arm for their planned bankruptcy. And he said, exactly. we, yeah, go ahead. And, and so what, but it's important for everyone, you know, because of the people that listen to your station and, and subscribe to our Trends Journal and follow our information, you know, there are people that want to do something to make the change. And it's very important. That's the model. We're going to be writing a lot about it in the uh, April Trends Journal. It was a movement, not a protest. Protests come and they go. Movements stay. And this movement, so you're asking me what's going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to start seeing more movements taking place in Italy, in Spain, in Portugal. There's going to be revolutions. They're not able to hold this together. You mentioned the quantitative easing lines, the baloney. They only are keeping this together by dumping all of this money into the system. It's not working. It's only saving the too big to fails that as we now heard from our Attorney General, Eric Himmler Holder, that these two banks are too big to prosecute in essence. They cannot keep this together. It's going to unravel. When will it fall apart? I don't know, because here's why I don't know. I know when it should happen, but it's like going it's like being a card counter, going to Las Vegas, you're a great card counter, but you're losing every hand. And then you find out that they put another 30 cards in the deck. That's and right. That's what they're doing. They keep changing the deck. That's right. We've reached into such an Alice in Wonderland that they said we left recession five years ago. And by every real estimate, uh, by all the top you know, private experts and using old numbers, uh, old ways to break things down. We're in a depression, but they just use mind control to say that we're not. 
uh, and then they replace beef with horse meat. They put more air in the chip packages. They adulterate the fuel. They do everything they can to paper this over, but more and more, uh, the paper is peeling away. But going back to the Justice Department, when they come out last year and this year and say, too big to prosecute, banks are allowed to launder, 400 plus billion now in, in drug money, the troops are ordered to grow the opium, yeah, we're going to have warrantless checkpoints, yeah, we're going to you know, arrest you for filming police in public, all this police state, when they do that, it's, it, it's more than too big to fail. It is a green light for corporate and government crime. It is above the law. They are trumpeting that we're above the law. And Gerald, let me tell you this. We're seeing armed troops show up everywhere now. A National Guard, you name it, at checkpoints, even in Austin. We're seeing TSA highway checkpoints expand. Special Forces operations. And I've talked to the troops. They've been told, even when you're off duty, wear your uniform, wear your battle belt, wear your weapons in public. To, to, to get everybody ready, and they say, ready for what? Well, for collapse and gun confiscation. And I'm telling you, Gerald, if they try the gun confiscation, it is going to erupt into a civil war, which is what they want. I think they want to start a civil war ahead of the collapse to blame the collapse on the civil war. What do you say about that? The, the move to get our guns, the, the two billion bullets, the armored vehicles, while they deny they're doing it. Well, again, they'll use something like they did with the tragedy at Sandy Hook. It doesn't even have to be a big one. You know, and they'll use that as an excuse to clamp down on us. And as you keep reporting, I go to your site virtually every day, and you, you keep putting out the information, what Homeland Security is doing, the billions of rounds of ammunition they're buying, the, the, the armored personnel carriers, et cetera. They know it's coming down. They're not, they're not, they're, they may be stupid, but they're very shrewd. And they're seeing it collapsing. And you, you, you really nailed it, Alex, when you said, are they using this as a trial balloon? Yes, they are. It's Cyprus. Nobody could find this damn place on the map if you didn't show 80% of the people or more where it is. As I said, it's only 0.2% of the entire sure. eurozone's gdp so they're the test case that's right what do you make of the russian fleet about to arrive i mean this is this sounds like the beginning of world war one or world war two it's all the same you know, military drawing battle lines all this craziness all so the bankers can play big guy and take over again i've been saying this over and over again the pat where history is repeating itself the crash of 1929, the Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, world war. And we're going back into it. Look at the words that just came out from the Communist Party meeting. You know, they only go every 10 years. And so there's been a lot of news coming out. It's a remilitarization. And they, the Chinese and Russians against NATO. The alliances are already forming. And their proxy, North Korea, now threatening to nuke everyone. I mean, they're kicking off a new war. Well, again, you know, whether I don't know if, you know, North Korea is going to nuke everyone, but I do know that the United States, oh, here's. Sure, I, I mean, I, I'm in new battle this? lines, a new Cold War. Yeah, you're right. Go ahead. How about this for a waste of money? Did you hear over the weekend they're going to put more, you know, missile systems on the west coast just in case north korea is going to bomb california i mean you want to talk about a waste of money here we are going down the toilet financially and they just found a couple of billion dollars more to put up missile systems that are at best only 50 percent accurate and against nothing. So what they're doing, Alex, is they're beating the war drums. So when you're asking about the Russian fleet moving in, the Russians, the Iranians, and China on one side, NATO, the United States, and the Arab Little League on the other side. It's incredible. Meanwhile, the globalists are above it all, playing all the sides off, using uncertainty to consolidate power, using rioting to implode countries. It's in all their own documents.
Insider billionaire investors like George Soros and John Paulson have recently made massive moves into gold, purchasing what Bloomberg News described as gold hoards. Soros alone doubled his holdings in a single day. Russia's Vladimir Putin has doubled down on gold, increasing the country's holdings by over 100%. With $1.8 trillion under management, the bond king Bill Gross, the world's preeminent bond fund manager at PIMCO, has warned investors of the dangers of QE3 and inflation. And what's he betting on? You guessed it, gold. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutsche Mark and the Weimar Republic anytime. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. Look at this report from Fox News. Dems preserve U.S.-Mexico food stamp partnership to advertise in Mexico for illegals to come to the U.S. and get food stamps. Anything to bankrupt the country. Anything to balkanize the nation. While USDA prepares for meat inspector furloughs. All they do is just radiate it now and they spray weird live vaccines on it. These viruses that eat the bacteria. I mean, it, it, it's just frankenfoods. And... Uh, the article goes over all the bizarreness about the partnership with Mexican government to raise awareness about food stamps among immigrants from that country. They, the Californian government, I remember I learned this 15 years ago. I even saw the ads. I was sent the newspaper by listeners in San Diego where the, 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 the government, the state put ads in the newspapers in San Diego, but also in Mexican papers saying, come to America, have your baby for free. I mean, anything to bankrupt the country. Can I go to Mexico and have a baby for free? I, I mean, again, missiles that don't do anything on the West Coast, uh, our own government helping give North Korea the nuclear reactors under ABB, under Clinton, and Rumsfeld was involved as the head of the company. Look at these articles on Drudge. New EU bailout plans, steal bank accounts, island set to seize personal savings. Uh, plan moves ahead as vote delayed. So they're like, oh, you're not going to vote for it? We're still going to do it. Putin, unfair, dangerous. Here come the bank runs. Germany, not our idea. Will Italy follow? And that's an Infowars.com article that I wanted to ask Gerald Salente about. That we're going to bring Ted Anderson up just for about three minutes to get his take as a 30-year gold and silver broker and owner of this network and also tell you about Minus Resources briefly. Bank chief calls for 15% looting of Italian savings. Is the financial rape of Cyprus another IMF riot waiting to happen? And then it's got the releases uh, here uh, where the German bank chief uh, with their central bank uh, has come out and said that we need to have 15% of the Italians' money to not even back up their debts, but to put it into EU general debts as the EU bureaucrats are exempt. Gerald Salente, Trends uh, Forecaster with TrendsJournal.com. Everybody should subscribe there today and sign up for the free news alerts or you're crazy. Knowledge is power. Uh, what's going to happen with the Italians if they're already on the edge of revolt over all the new VAT taxes and stuff? And, and, and the head of the IMF says they should work you know, six, seven days a week and pay more money. What's going to happen now? Uh, when they try to come and say, oh, Italians are criminals, you know, every man, woman, and child, we're going to take their money. What do you think that's going to do? Again, you're going, we, we've been writing about this, Alex. It's class warfare. That's all this is. You have a bunch of money junkies at the top sucking everything out of the system, whether it's in Egypt, whether there's no Arab Spring, whether it's Tunisia, any of these countries. It's a couple of people and their buddies on the top just like the United States, where the 1% gets all the gains and the rest of us go down. You saw the personal income data that came out a, a couple of weeks ago. What did it decline? 3.6%? You know, so what you, what's happening is the people have had it. They, and you know my saying, 
When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And they're losing it. They've had enough. They've had enough of this criminality. And the only thing the politicians are are the wise guys for the, for the crime bosses. And the crime bosses are the Goldman Sachs gang and, and, the, and the Merrill Lynch mob and, and, the, and the J.P. Morgan Chase criminals. I mean, you saw, you read the paper, what happened with, with this so-called London Whale thing and how they cooked all the books with J.P. Morgan Chase. Any of us, if we did it, they'd have us locked up. Well, you don't see any heads roll. And the people losing their homes. I have friends in Greece. I have friends in Spain and in Italy. I have people in Portugal. They keep telling me the, with the suffering that people are going Oh, it's to. hellish. And, and, and that's not in our news. Tell folks what Europe's like. It's in their news, but people don't know. Babies being left, bankruptcy, whole thousands of people begging for food out of, uh, you know, uh, dumpsters. Uh, if a truck dumps a few fruits on the ground, there's riots. This is happening all over southern uh, Europe, the Mediterranean. It's starting into Western Europe. Do people have any idea how big a powder keg this is? And then the government of Europe is arming itself and aiming its weapons outward. Uh, just incredible tyranny. And how they exempt themselves. I keep going back to that. How the EU bureaucrats exempt themselves from the EU-wide VAT and income tax. I mean, they should all be arrested right there. Look at LIBOR. All of it rigged against the people. They should all go to jail, but they don't. So why shouldn't they steal more? Because they want to make everybody poor as a tool of control. And thank God we've got guns, Gerald. Because that just the fact the guns are there, they're afraid to really rape us as hard as they are the Europeans. The biggest mistake that this administration made in my estimation, is this whole push for gun control. Because what they did was they rallied a group of people that may have not been rallied before. So now more people have come under the umbrella, the umbrella of losing your individual rights. This isn't about guns, it's about rights. And they keep being taken away from us. It was a huge mistake they made because they brought in millions and millions of people that probably wouldn't have given a damn about other issues. But now it's hitting them. It's hitting their own psychology before it was out of their minds. If they, if they oh, so what, there's warrantless wiretapping. Yeah, it sounds terrible, but what do I care? So what about the National Defense Authorization Act? It doesn't affect me. But now it's a direct effect, and it brought a lot more people into the fold. And going back to what's going on in Europe, again, look who's running the central bank in Europe, Mario Draghi. Who is Mario Draghi? He was a former vice chairman of the Goldman Sachs European division. Who's the guy that's taking over now at the Bank of England? Mark Carney. Who is he with? Goldman Sachs. Who was the guy that started this whole too big to fail scam going? Henry Paulson, former Treasury Secretary under George Bush. Where was he before he came here? The chairman of Goldman Sachs. Who was the guy that deregulated Glass Steagall, got it into motion under Clinton? Could have been Robert Rubin, could it? Now, he was with Goldman Sachs too, and, and the chairman? Yeah. Can anybody put this together? It's a banking takeover worldwide. That's all this is. And what they're going to do, I believe in it. Oh, here's the message I want to tell everybody. If you think you have your money in the bank and it's yours, you better grow up. And I've told everyone the stories of what's happened to me several times trying to withdraw a sizable deposit. Every time you're on, you say they will take your money out of the bank. They will just grab it. They will take percentages. Now they're saying they're going to take 401ks. Now they're ordering companies to invest in too big to fail bonds. I mean, it's on. They are going to steal everything in increments. And my wife's gone to get a few thousand dollars. And they freak out and ask her if she's a criminal. And she's like, we've been at this bank for five years. We, uh, I mean, yeah, again, you know, they're the crooks. And another thing that we did on the Trends in the News, we, we sent you that video. On February 27th, we said 
Watch out, stay very closely tuned to what's going on in March. March or April, we said something is going to come down. I went back to our 1999 trend forecast of the dot-com bubble burst. It's right there on the Trends Journal on our site, trendsjournal.com. And I said the dot-com bubble would burst by the second quarter of 2000. It blew apart in March. March is one of those months like October. You could go throughout history. You always see it repeating itself. This Cyprus issue, although it's a small country, it's a huge event. In, in, in days, if not weeks, it'll be forgotten by most people. And then they're going to wake up to it. They, most won't wake up to it. The next thing is going to hit is going to be a major hit from either Spain, Portugal, or Italy. And my money's on Italy because in Italy, they cannot form a government. Beppe Grillo will have no part of the corrupt system that's in place. When will the people wise up? Nothing is going to change in this country with the systems that are in place now. So the bottom line is pull your money out of the bank. That's what you're saying personally. That's what everybody, in my view, needs to do because, ladies and gentlemen, the, the system will steal your money and is arming against us like common criminals. I want to bring Ted Anderson not, up. Wait, I don't want to say that. I'm not telling people what to do. Because if anything, I'm, I'm only speaking for myself. No, no, I said I personally. Right. I personally, but we have listeners calling in saying, what will it do if everybody worldwide started pulling their money out of the bank ahead of them doing this incrementally? I believe it'll straighten the system out. But, I mean, there's only 2 3% actual cash on average for Europe and the U.S., uh, for actual money out there. Do you think that would send a shot across their bow? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll straight. It'll bring down these too big to fail so we can get business going again. So, 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 so local banks can start building again. Then what do they have? Over 80% of the action. Seven banks? Sure. Who made this stuff up? We do, have that, we do have that video clip. It says February 27th, but I, I, was this a year ago or two years no, ago? No, no. It was this past February. A couple of weeks ago, I said, watch out what's going to happen in March. Okay, but but I remember you years ago. Oh, that's the bank. No, that comes later on. Those are the ones that that's the watching out in March. Later on, after that clip, are the other ones about the holidays. Okay, so so is it all one clip, guys, or is it multiple clips? Because my issue is we just got this, and I want to I want to play it. Okay, so we were sent one clip, Gerald. Are you saying in the one clip is a group of clips of you predicting it? Yes. Go past the February twenty seventh one and go to the. Go to the the uh, bank holiday ones. Okay, well, while we're finding that uh, in the clip, I want to bring Ted Anderson up because, again, I'm, I'm the same way as Gerald. I'm not going to tell you what I think you should do, but I personally have bought firearms, uh, a rural property, uh, and gold and silver, and it is all done very, very well. But I don't have it to do well. I do it because I can't trust this criminal system. And uh, I want to bring Ted Anderson up to get his brief take on all this because he's predicted this for many years as well. I mean, this is what governments do. Ted, how close do you think we're getting towards a more accelerated meltdown? They had to know this was going to cause a panic. Did, uh, do you agree with Gerald and I that, that they did this as a trial balloon? Well, you, you know, Alex, when you see a place like Cyprus falling apart and causing problems, I mean, it, we're talking about a little blip on the map. This is not a, a big economic uh, superpower, and and yet it, it drives the value of gold right over $1,600 an ounce. We've seen a $50 increase there. Silver's up, too. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of problems in the economy. The Fed and the, and the central banks of the world are trying to prop up this whole thing by keeping the interest rates low. Meanwhile, while taking care of like like uh, like like your big guys have been talking about, they're they're just taking care of their own. That's all. They're they're, they're destroying the economy for everybody else. But they're bailing out the too big to fail. Just like uh, just like Gerald is saying, it, we're we're right on the edge. We're right on the cusp of a huge problem. And it's it's so it's so mind boggling that things are holding together. But it's it's like stuck together with tacks and staples. I mean this absolutely. Is, well, you've got that free report, ten reasons to own gold for people to make their own decision, their own research. But I, I personally am, am making the decision 
I don't even have that much money in the bank anyways. I've invested it all getting the word out here at InfoWars.com. But, I mean, it's time to just realize that you can't even have operating capital hardly in the bank for, you know, our news operation because they could steal that. And then we're just shut down. I mean, it, it's really crazy. And, and it's going to hurt business that, that, that banks and government are so untrustworthy. And that's part of what collapses society. I hope people will give Midas Resources a call. And uh, we'll check out the great gold and silver deals you've got because I believe now is the time to get involved. And I personally am going to double down. I mean, look at this article I've got from Bloomberg last year. Soros buying gold as record prices seen on stimulus. Give Midas a call at 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. And again, Ted's a big sponsor of the show and also... Uh, the owner of the radio network and just the best gold and silver broker out there in my humble view. But uh, going back to Gerald, Gerald, is there anything you personally want to add on this banking issue with how you've tried to get money out before, not even that much, and then act like you're some type of criminal, uh, and, and how this hurts the economy that banks can't be trusted now? Well, again, you know, you mentioned about how they're rigging everything. You mentioned about the LIBOR. And we're talking about, what, about $600 trillion worth of rigging? And then you want to see a rig that's right in front of everybody's eyes? How about the bond market? You don't have to, you don't have to make it up. You see the money that they're dumping into the system every, uh, every month, $85 billion plus that we don't know about, beyond the $85 billion that we know. So what I'm saying is for people to use their own common sense, look what's going on. Do you think the Europeans right now aren't pulling their money out of their bank accounts? Don't you think that they're freaking out because they see what's going on? This deal, when, you, when I've been reading everything coming out on it, when the people from Cyprus, the president and the finance minister, went to Brussels, the deal was already done. The Germans told them what they were going to do. And they were going to take the money from the depositors and where's the money going? The money is going. It's not, they talk about the, the, the banks in Cyprus and they talk about the banks in Italy and in Spain. No, no. These are the big German banks, the Finnish banks, the Dutch banks, the Belgian banks that loaned all these banks in the smaller countries the money to loan out. They didn't get that money on their own. So what they're doing is they're really taking this money from the bottom so they could pay off the big guys at the top. So all I'm saying is if anybody thinks that they're not going to screw you, well, good for you. And you personally, uh, I know Ted's more than half into gold and investments and savings. Uh, you, you personally are a firm believer in gold and silver. All my investments are in gold and silver. And the only other investments I have are the historic buildings that I buy in Colonial Kingston because this is where the first American Revolution had a lot of its roots, and I want to do the second one. Other than that, that's it. Gold and silver, and a good friend of mine, I think, has the best strategy. Every month he buys what he can afford in gold and silver. So you think about it. You just saw gold go down, what, to 15, I forgot what the low was in this recent downturn. And now it's back over 1,600. So when you keep buying every month, then you start seeing this thing really averaging out. Oh, and by the way, for all of those people that watch CNBC and believe the hype and how wonderful the markets are doing, check it out. When the markets were at where they are now back in 2007, I think gold was about eh, 760-something dollars, around there. What's it now? 1,600. Oh, and what's the market now? Oh, it got back to where it was in 2007. And it's with devalued dollars, so it's inflationary. We'll be right back with his prediction. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. 
The Aquapod kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The pocket socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com. You're the devil in disguise. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah, well, this is devil out in the open, not devil in disguise with the New World Order. Trendsjournal.com. He's going to do 30 minutes of overdrive with us. Ted's going to pop in a little bit. In the next segment, we're going to take a few calls. For people that want to talk to Gerald at 800 25 99231. Uh, now, now, we've got predictions here in this compilation he sent us from last year in June. But here's the first one, I think, it's February 27th of this year, just a month or so ago, uh, predicting what we're now seeing unfold. So, now, TV viewers can see the dates. For radio listeners, I'll mention the date during the clips. This, this will take us to the end of the hour. Then we'll come back with Gerald's response. Now, let's go to the first clip. Yankee puts case for benefits of easing. Fed chairman in combative mood as he defends continuing asset purchases. Ben Bernanke's mission for his trip to Congress yesterday was to explain why the benefits of the U.S. Federal Reserve's third $85 billion a month round of quantitative easing will outweigh its costs and risks. So let's make this 100% clear. The only reason these markets are improving is because of all this cheap money being flooded into it. March is an important month. If you go back to October of 1999, I wrote in the Trends Journal that the dot-com bubble would burst before the end of the second quarter of 2000. It's right there for everyone to look at. And it did. It burst in March. There's a lot of pessimism in the markets now. March and April are going to be critical months to see where the future is taking us in the financial markets. I urge you to stay tuned very closely. Again, when you look at these facts and the numbers, the only thing that's holding it together are low interest rates. And not only here, also around the world, as I keep mentioning. All right, here he is a year earlier, back in June. Gold investment demand in China advanced 10% because of buyers seeking a haven from Europe's debt crisis and the prospects of weakening currencies, according to the large, country's largest bullion bank. Exactly what I've been saying. Oh, bank runs. Dun, da, da, da. Holiday. They call the bank holiday <laughs> in Italy. That's right, people are freaking out. <laughs> to me, anybody that has a lot of dough in the bank and gets it taken from them when they call a holiday, Remember, you heard it coming, you saw it coming, you knew it was going to come. There he is uh, back in 2012 as well. In the Trends Journal, we're putting it on screen for radio listeners. And uh, that was, well, that was about, that, that was before 2012. They made the prediction in 2012 that that would start unfolding. And then he's got uh, blow-ups of it. Uh, the conditions uh, continue to deteriorate that you would see. Uh, panicked type activities and bank holidays and we've also predicted on the show that they would grab money now this is out of the uh, uh, from my broadcast December 27 2011 they, they were talking about declaring a bank holiday that's right this is June 2009 Biden's words are as soon as we got sworn in the first thing at the top of our list we had the transition team there and 30 economists was whether or not to call a bank holiday. 
This is no holiday, folks. Can't <laughs> Hold on. Let's uh, hit pause. Let's back it up to the beginning of that. We're going to start the next hour of Overdrive with Gerald Salente. And I know I'm laughing as this is so painful. That's from two years ago. Him saying, get ready for the bank holidays. We'll be right back with Gerald Salente, Ted Anderson, and your phone calls. Fourth hour coming up. Infowars.com for audio streams. Your station doesn't carry it. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. I really like how Gerald does the news, and I routinely go over to his site and watch his daily news briefs and weekly news briefs. Sitting behind his great bar there at his old family grocery store that he converted into an office and has my, my crew's been up there. It'd it, be great to be in that neighborhood and friends with Gerald, drop by, have a beer with him. Uh, Ted Anderson's with us. Ted, you just heard some of those predictions. We're going to come back in the next segment and play the one we haven't gotten to and go to some calls with Gerald Salente. But this is really a no-brainer. Uh, what's your comments uh, on where we see this going? I mean, don't the globalists know that MF Global and stuff like this is only going to destroy confidence in them? I mean, you, you've even got the Federal Reserve head of Dallas coming out and saying this is crony capitalism and, and it's going to destroy us. Well, it sure is going to destroy us, and Gerald is right on target. I mean, he's been right on for how many years now? I mean, Alex, I mean, it's been years and years and years of predictions. You cannot continue to print money in it and, and bail out your friends and, 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 and make, a, make a great deal for them and, and, and screw the people without having consequences. And, and we're seeing those consequences. Yeah, they could have set up the Cyprus thing. I mean, how could, how could one little island like this, uh, you know, throw an economic earthquake into the entire world's economy? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. If people are smart, they will be getting out of the paper and getting into gold and silver. I mean, just like Gerald said, I mean, I own some buildings, too, because I have to operate. I've been to Gerald's place. It's a beautiful place. And, uh, and I need to tell you, if, if you're sitting in the bank, if you have your money in paper, I think you're making a big mistake. You just really are. I agree. T Ted, briefly, what are some of the best gold specials? People can always call and ask about the radio special every day, and you'll have the lowest prices. I know you even have gold you bought before it went back up. Most dealers are going to charge more now that it's gone up. You're freezing your prices. How long can you do that until you run out of your supplies? Well, I mean, Alex, I mean, I have to roll with the market, too, but right now I do have some really good prices because the market just ran up another 12 bucks. I mean, it's up over $50, really, if you look at it from the bottom. Franks right now are at three fifty ninety three. dollars We have the uh, Walking Liberty halves. They're at sixteen seventeen. dollars uh, Rounds, you know, just the clean silver rounds are at thirty two twelve. dollars um, Canadian Maple Leafs right now are at $1,751. There, there's a lot of different things. British Sovereigns at $440. The thing about it is that you need to get into gold and silver as you could afford it, just like Gerald was explaining. If you can buy some, buy some. Put it away. One of the things you can do, which really covers the banking issue more than anything I can think of other than Gerald's Trends uh, Journal, is that uh, Dishonest Money, American Dream, and Obama Deception video. I mean, for $72, and we do take credit cards, you can get two pieces of silver, and these are the silver dollars that were meant as constitutional money two decades ago, or two, two centuries ago, the turn of the last century, uh, for $72. And, and, and the reason why I like that so much is it's more about the education. They get to see what's going on with your Obama deception, which covers the banking system, by the way. It's not really about Obama. It's about who's, puppet, who's pulling the puppet strings. And, and all our predictions that came true. Then you've got the dishonest money breaking down the banking system, the Federal Reserve. And then you've got the American Dream cartoon I really wouldn't show it to kids. It's a little racy, but it's really great exposing the New World Order, the Rothschilds, how it all works. The two silver dollars it costs, shipping included, and over $60 in free stuff. 
as a loss leader to introduce you to Midas Resources, 800-686-2237, 800-686-237. Thank you so much, Ted. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. You bet. We're going to go up, come back with Gerald Salente and get his take on the videos we just aired in the last hour and audio of him predicting the holiday and finish up that clip and then see how he thinks we can defeat these people and how far he thinks in his gut this will go. And, and, and as he said, in this Alice in Wonderland world, who knows where it's all going? Uh, because they could totally, you know, do anything. I mean, who knows? Uh, also go and support Gerald and support yourself and subscribe to the journal at trendsjournal.com to get the hard copy uh, and also sign up for the free uh, alerts that they have there on the site, trendsjournal.com. Because just because you know this information doesn't mean your friends, family, and neighbors do. You need to be warning your friends and family about all this stuff so they're protected. Our number one goal is to defeat the globalists, and we do that by being aware of their operations and their plan. We're all in this together. All right, Gerald Salente is with us some more for the hour, uh, and we're going to be taking some of your phone calls that have guests for Gerald. But I want to bring something up to Gerald here and then play that clip that we didn't finish of him in 2011 on the broadcast, uh, a, a, a YouTube copy, a clip of the TV uh, streams where he was saying, get ready for the bank holiday. And he said the New York Times called him a pessimist porn dealer. I get called a, 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 a fear porn person. And it's not fear porn. If I'm driving down the street and I see my neighbor's house on fire, I'm going to pull up and see if they're aware of it or I'm going to call the fire department. I mean, admitting something's going on is a good thing. So we can stop it. And, of course, I get attacked. Gerald gets attacked. Uh, you know, other guests that we have on who, who actually tell the truth, we get attacked. And it's important to defend us. I mean, Gerald doesn't care. But, I mean, Gerald, you've been torn up pretty bad. You know, people say, oh, Gerald said seven years ago, you know, we'd have a collapse. It never happened. I mean, what do you call 2008? What do you call what's happening now? Uh, I mean, we could have total collapse. They'd say you were wrong. Uh, th this lying, this stonewalling, do you want to respond to all the people that have been proven wrong and the fact that you've been right? Well, yeah, you know, my, my record speaks for itself. I'll put it up against anybody's. Do I get the timing right all the time? No. You know, you can't. And I always make it clear, no one could predict the future. There are too many wild cards. Do I know that the Federal Reserve is going to dump in $17 trillion into the system to bail it out? Do I know that they're going to kill capitalism with four words called too big to fail. Oh, and by the way, here's another one that I don't want to hear anymore. Yes, Mussolini did say it's a fact, Jack. The merger of state and corporate powers is called fascism. So did I know that we would lose all our rights and we would let the Federal Reserve and the banking system con us with this continuing scam. I want to read something. I'm glad you mentioned that. This, is, this isn't edited yet, but it's coming from the um, Spring Trends Journal, which will be out in about three or four weeks. As with all Ponzi schemes, the system is designed to collapse, and the victims will be those who believe their governments were holding currencies that were being systematically debased. That's all this is. It's one big pump and dump Ponzi scheme. Let, let me put it to you this any... way. Let me put it to you this way then. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I've studied history because it's so interesting. I'm, I mean, I've probably read 200, 300 history books to be conservative and, and countless journals on the subject. Has there ever been a time that they've debased a currency that it hasn't finally hyperinflated or super hyperinflated? Because I don't know of any time the path we're on hasn't led straight to economic hell. It's going to. Every, this, is what, this is what is so unbelievable. A theme of this Trends Journal coming out is, I don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. They want to believe their lie. They want to believe in their belief. But am I wrong? Hasn't this always led to collapse? Yes, it has to. You can't keep printing worthless money. You cannot keep, look, the only reason this whole bond scam is going on is because what the Federal Reserve is doing is in front of us. Look what's going on in China now. What they're doing now is they're afraid of inflation. It just went up 3.2%. It's much higher than that. 
They've been dumping money into the system in a different way. They've been building their infrastructure, but the result is the same. It has to, look, I don't tell, again, people what to do. My, you know, we're taught to be by my dear father, may his soul rest in peace. Think for yourself. I buy gold. I buy silver. I buy it for my golden years. I am not a speculator. Why would I want to hold on to paper money that and they just keep printing and printing? Oh, and going back to the other bigger game, China, Russia, Iran, they're all getting together to try to kill the petrodollar. Because once they start tra stop trading oil with petrodollars, Boy, you're going to see the dollar crash like you've never seen it crash before. And notice the EU and others are moving towards that SDR down the road. Uh, they are designing the destruction of society. So what do we do? Do we just beat the drum for their arrest? I mean, they've proven they're above the law. The Justice Department has said they're above the law. The Justice Department's busy staging Fast and Furious to get our guns. I mean, we really do just have a criminal takeover here. It is. It's a banking takeover. So again, you know, to me, gold and silver, how, why, would any, you get, why would you want to hold this paper crap? They're debasing it in front of our, we got a six, you know, you're going to play those clips. When I met, was on your show, the deficit was $15 trillion. It went up a trillion and a half since then. They're never going to solve this problem. This whole se se sequester stuff, what are they talking about? 80-something billion dollars? That's one month what the Fed is dumping into the system. They can't save it. It's impossible. I truly believe, Alex, they're going to debase the currency. That, and again, if you're living in Europe, who would want to hold a euro when you see what's going on in front of your eyes? And the same thing in China. So you're going to see this thing to me. Will it collapse next week, next month, next year? I can't put a date on it. But only speaking for myself, why would I believe that by printing more money, by keeping interest rates near zero, when interest rates go back up, the, oh, the bond market's going to collapse. And all those people that are saying, when interest rates go up, it's going to be a sign because of a strong economy. Grow up. We got to import our shirts, our shoes. We're importing, we import our oil, we import our cars, uh, you name it. No, it's not going to recuperate because of a strong economy. It's been a plan, a long-term agenda, and they're going to clamp down with a police state. But we've been there warning people, so this isn't happening in a vacuum. So they're saying anybody that criticizes the Federal Reserve is the new terrorist, which shows the foreign occupiers, the globalist occupiers, are saying those of us that are warning you are the bad guys. No, they're the bad guys. I want to finish that clip and then go to calls. Uh, from you two years ago on the show talking about the holiday. Here it is. They were talking about declaring a bank holiday. That's right. This is June 2009. Biden's words are, as soon as we got sworn in, the first thing at the top of our list, we had the transition team there and 30 economists, was whether or not to call a bank holiday. This is no holiday, folks. You can't get your money. You think it's bad trying to get it now? You can't get any of it. And when you do get it, they'll do like they did the last time they call a bank holiday. They'll devalue the currency. So that's what I'm, we're warning. They've already said they were going to do it. Now remember, Alex, that happened before there was a European crisis. That happened before more the United States was $15 trillion in debt. That happened before the Federal Reserve, when you add it all up, pumped in $26 trillion into the Ponzi scheme to keep it afloat. And here's the Winter Trends Journal 2010. I'll show it for uh, TV viewers, but top trends breaking point 2010. And he talks about bank holidays, draconian measures, uh, and taking part of your bank accounts, just, just taking money right out. And then they call it a tax. They call Obamacare doubling uh, your cost. We're going to skip this uh, network break. This is our final long segment with Gerald Salente.
TrendsResearch.com, TrendsJournal.com, history before it happens. Uh, and he's on with us right now. Again, I'm Alex Jones, your host. We're going to take some phone calls uh, here right now for your uh, questions in the 10 or 12 minutes we have left with Gerald. Uh, let's talk to James in Missouri. Uh, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. You know, I'm just getting kind of to the point now where, where I can't justify spending my energy, my life force towards anything except we're trying to um, express what is going on to other people. And I just don't, I just don't know, you know how much or more are we going to put up with? I mean, we the have general public is in a trance. We got to figure out how to get them out of their trance. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it's fine. But I mean, you know, how, how much longer are we going to put up with this? I mean, we've got, Gerald's been talking about just the, just the blatant overt manipulation going on in our financial institutions. Uh, we were talking about earlier about the, the manipulation of the, the food, the manipulation of the water, the manipulation of everything. No, no, we're in everything. a scientific dictatorship. That's why these guys are on such power trips, because they just manipulate us like we're dumb animals. Gerald? Well, he's, when was it going to change? Again, the model to me that exists is this five-star movement. It's not a protest. It's a movement. We have to get a movement going where we have conditions. For example, some of the conditions, and I'm speaking about this a lot now, all of these politicians start talking about our founding fathers when it's convenient for them. No more foreign entanglements, founding fathers. No more central banks. We have to put together a movement. And I believe that between now and the next election is the time to do it. And when I studied the five-star movement in Italy, they only began that in 2008, 2009. And look what happened. That party got more votes than any other single party in Italy. There are enough of us, but we have to unite behind a movement, not a political party. And that's the big difference. We need to change the system. You cannot fix the Gambinos, the Bananos, the Democrats, or the Republicans. And they know that we're going to try to get free of them, so they're arming with the teeth against us. And police and military better be discussing this right now, and citizens better be very aggressive about what's happening. We have to make this the big cultural uh, issue uh, in our society right now. We have yes, to. Yes, and just stay with the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Just stay on this issues. You know, it came out today, big news, Hillary Clinton's for same-sex marriage. You know, what do I care what she's for? You know, was she coming out of the closet and going and gonna to get rid of Bill? What the hell do I care about? What the, I don't care about those issues. I, those aren't the Exactly. Things. The group's trying to say, you know, focus on it, that it's bad or distracting, and the people obsessing on it are, are saying it's greater distracting. They shove all this stuff. Well, is he gay or is she a lesbian or, or what's going to go on with this? While they, while they implode everything around us, they have us all fighting with each other. Exactly. So going back to the question, we need to have a movement that's based upon what this country was founded on. And every one of them said, do not become involved in foreign entanglements. Every one of them, except a few of the criminals in there, didn't want a central bank. Every one of them wanted to have our freedom of expression, the right to bear arms. Every one of them. It's a very simple process. It has to go back to the people. Oh, and do you know what the big one with Be Beppe Grillo is? The one I've been talking about for two years now, direct democracy. He's, he wants the people in Italy to vote whether or not they want to stay in the euro. Let the people vote. We do not have a representative form of government. We have Feinsteins and Pelosi's. We have McConnell's and we have Boners. We have a bunch of guys and women that only represent the most powerful and the most amount of money that they give to them. Look at Obama with this new, this new uh, lobbying group that he put together. If you raise $500,000 or if you donate $500,000, 
You get to meet with El Presidente Ugh. every four months. I mean, it's just open, uh, open globalism, open mafia takeover. Uh, thank you, James. Let's talk to Matthew in Maryland. You're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to get a uh, comment about uh, the new pope being supposedly, uh, after listening to Tarpley's analysis over the weekend, he's very anti-globalist. Um, just wanted to know how you guys felt uh, how that's going to impact the economic outlook. That's not the way I read it. I read it he's a member of the club from a lot of the information that I've been reading. And, I, and I, it, it, you know, there's a lot of spin going on. And one of the things was when they had that, that terrible time in Argentina with all those missing people, 30,000 uh, of them. He was helping out? He was, he, let's just say he was silent on it. And uh, so, and you know, there's this other thing too. You know, I'm Catholic. You know, the Jesuits were never going to be Pope. That was one of the things that Je the Jesuits, by the way, was only founded 1,500 years after Christ. So I don't think there's much of a connection in terms of the spirituality from the originator. But having said that, their doctrine was never to see, be, be a pope or, or, or go into the hierarchy. So there's something here that doesn't set right with me. As a matter of fact, the chief Jesuit spokesman just before the, 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 the coronation of the pope, the election of the pope, said it would never happen that he would be chosen. That's how out of the... Yeah, notice on every Jesuit. level, ancient taboos are being broken. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see anything coming out of that. All right, there you go. Uh, Matthew, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. I, but I guess it's curious that he's going out into the crowds now, though, too. He's, well, he's very fearless. You know what? You know, that's what they're supposed to do. It's like they made a big deal about Mother Teresa. They're all supposed to be Mother Teresa's. This is what they're supposed to do. And they get one or two to do it, and they make a big deal about it. They're all supposed to be with the poor. They're all supposed to be working with the people all the time. So now, is this to me is a publicity stunt. All right, thank you, Matthew. Let's talk to Bill in Florida. Bill, you're on the air with Gerald Salente. Go ahead. Hello, gentlemen. God bless the both of you. You're awesome. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm a big um, ex-Marine, and um, I've just been um, investing my money in physical gold and silver. Been doing it for almost a year now. And now I um, sold a property, ready to sell more, and I'm thinking of a storage vault somewhere. And I was looking at gold money. Does Gerald have an opinion on that or where to store, um, you know, a big amount for an investment without it, with it being safe, which in this day and age. Well, they go you know, after, they go after safety deposit boxes now. I mean, it's really crazy. That's, that's when you the one, I agree with Alex. That's the one place I would not put it in. I would say use your imagination. You're a Marine. You've been out there. You know what life looks like. And pack some heat. And, you know, just use your own, use your own head. And, uh, but again, you know, when they, when they confiscated gold back in the 1930s, your safety deposit box wasn't so safe. No, yeah. And right now, of course, they, could, they know all your information, everything about you. And if they close down the banks, they close down your deposit box. I would just say, you know, use your head. Yeah, what did the old timers do? What, 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 what did Long John Silvers do? Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, you know, you <laughs> have some property, bury it somewhere. You know, don't tell anybody. Bury it with do. Billy Bones. Thank you for yeah. the call, Bill. Uh, let's talk to uh, Hoot in South Carolina. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how are you doing? Pretty good, sir. Go ahead. I got a little... Um... <clears throat> Insider tip, I was actually at a prominent restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, had a few drinks with some gentlemen. They were from Europe. And he gave me his business card. He works for T-Max Asset Management AG, based out of Zurich, Switzerland. And he was the managing director of the investment bank in there. And he said, showed me a photo that he had of the new proposed currency of the Federal Reserve and said, this is what it's going to look like. It will be backed by gold. And, you know, at first I was like, well, why would they do that? They've done such a great job of uh, not having it backed by gold and of destroying that um, since the 1970s. So why would they all of a sudden convert to, uh, to having the currency backed by gold again? And if so, then when do they plan on doing this? What, what would that play out as? That, that's a great question. Uh, I think it was 2010, the head of the World Bank back then, Zolik, 
he came out with this concept about having gold as one of the parts of the banking of a of a new reserve currency. Yeah, 10 to 30 percent. And I, and I think that that's a, a reality. I think that's something that could happen. Because the next time everything implodes, no one's going to trust fiat anymore. That's right. So if they have some gold behind it, now think about it. If they have to put gold as part of the backing of a new reserve currency, you think gold prices are going to be high? Absolutely. Because they got a lot of dough out there, and they got a lot of backing to do. So you could see gold prices go up to like 11000 well dollars an ounce. Well, if you look at 12, 13 year graphs, gold just keeps going up. People look at one year graphs or six months graphs. Look at a 12 month graph. That's why I'm in gold and silver. Uh, in closing, Gerald, have you noticed the media is trying to create race division and trying to act like libertarianism is a white thing and, 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 and Southern Poverty Law Center reports about people that think the New World Order is taking over or mega banks, they're white Christians. And it makes no sense to people that are researched, but it's meant to create division. What do you make of that? Well, look at this last election. You can, you can see the division it created. And you were talking about the food stamps for Mexicans. I mean, who do they vote for? They go Democratic. So, yeah, they use divisiveness all the time, whether it's uh, 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 between the people in the states or among the different nations. So fear and hysteria, hate and deception, that's what they do. And, of course, they're doing it. It's elementary. Shut society. down the economy transfer everybody onto food stamps and then things go more bankrupt take more money from the middle class and pretty soon there's no middle class i mean it's, it's so horrible well one of the reasons why you're not seeing this great depression that we're in when you look at john williams shadow stats and they're like they came out with the new, new employment numbers last month 236,000 jobs or something like that created but hardly anybody mentioned the 139 that dropped thousand that dropped out the only reason you don't see the bread lines is because of the food stamps it's digital food lines yeah exactly so if you didn't have that food stamps going on then you would really see the horrors that are being created you'd have 50 day. million homeless people in bread lines 47 million on food stamps isn't it 50 almost 50 million it's almost 50 million now yeah and that's not even counting some state programs so could you imagine 50 million people online for food outside like they used to do during the great depression do you there would be riots in the streets you're right trendsjournal.com i'm alex jones with infowars.com amazing gerald thank you for all the time today yeah. visit infowars.com and prisonplanet.com when you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.